so what I'm going to be doing today is setting up this Ubiquiti ES16XG switch. They seem to be very hard to get hold of here in the UK. I'm not too sure what they like um, getting hold of in other parts of the uh, world. Uh, but it's taken me about a month to get hold of one of these switches. But at least it's given me a bit of time to set up my other stuff which I don't need. So I've made a little bit of room, made a little bit of money, uh, which has financed the, uh, the cost of a switch. Now Ubiquiti market a switch as a aggregation switch, but I'm actually going to be using it as a core switch. Um, I'm going to get around its uh, limitations of not having any stacking or VORP um, by employing some virtual or hardware methods. So I'm going to quickly run through those um, methods and what I intend to do with switch and then I'm going to get straight into setting up the switch. So keep watching and hope you enjoy the video. So this is a very basic overview of my network. The two switches here, the two HP 1920 switches, uh, they don't really do any stacking and they don't do any um, VRRP. Uh, so what I use for the VRRP is I use Vios, uh, which actually um, virtual uh, running on each host. I've got two VMware hosts here and each of them run a Vios virtual router and a virtual firewall. Um, so some of the inter VLAN routing is done on the firewall and some of the inter VLAN routing is done on a, the uh, virtual uh, Vios. Um, I've got one on each. Um, these two fast routers, they run VORP, so I've got the resilience there if the, um, one of the hosts goes down or one of his, these uh, virus routers go down, um, the virtual IP will swap over to the other BIOS router. Uh, the two firewalls that I have, they're actually running active passive, um, so that gives resiliency of uh, the firewalls so I can either lose a, a switch or I can lose a um, firewall or uh, a BIOS or a host and I still have con uh, complete connectivity from my APs and wireless devices connecting to the APs all the way through to the actual um, Dreitech VDSL router. Uh, both firewalls are connected to the Dreitech router, uh, but because they run in a HA environment, only the active firewall actually has the IP address. So I can actually take one of the um, switches or hosts down in, um, from remotely and I still have connectivity back into my um, my servers. All my resilient um, services such as DNS, uh, me VLAN routing and also my uh, VPN uh, run completely on each host um, so they're fully resilient. Um, I use spanning tree between the three switches here so that means that if one of the switches goes down then the, um, it'll go across the other link and because I'm using spanning tree it just blocks the relevant link um, so I don't get any um, switching loops or um, storms um, so it works very very well um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm actually going to configure the um, ubiquity switch I'm going to um, connect into my existing switch uh, but I've also got two HP switches connected into Ubiquiti so I just want to make sure that the actual spanning tree actually works properly because I have had issues with the um, Unify range of switches where I've had to disable SFP completely and obviously I don't want to do that because it's going to ruin my nice resilient uh, setup so um, let's get started by setting up the actual um, uh, switch. Uh, so the 
ubiquity is going to be, pl be plugging into um, one of these switches here and I'm going to have to give the, um, the ubiquity a temporary um, IP address uh, by DHCP is pretty probably the easiest way to do it. So let's go ahead and open up the um, the switch that so I can actually configure the link on. So I think it's in here. The ubiquity switch is connected to this um, this uh, switch. So on this um, switch here, uh, I could do this command line, but I just can't be bothered for a quick change. So um, the ubiquity switch is going to be plugged into this port here, uh, which is currently untagged on 32, um, but tagged on 160. Uh, now VLAN 160 is the actual um, VLAN I want to use for management. Um, I've untagged it on 32 because um, on VLAN 32 it'll actually get DHCP IP address whereas on 160 it won't. So the switch looks all okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start up the ubiquity switch and um, see what IP address it gets given and we can do some basic config. So after a minute or so the actual um, switch has come up now, the status light has turned to uh, white and I've got a SFP connection plugged into the actual um, switch. Uh, this is the uplink to my, um, my normal network. Uh, I didn't want to do any fancy connections into my network until I made sure that the spanning tree on the ubiquity switch worked as it should do. Um, so what we can do now is we can go into our uh, DHCP server and we can see what IP address the actual um, ubiquity switch has been given. So it's going to look on Let's log into my DHCP server. Uh, it's currently a uh, 2012 server uh, evaluation. So let's log into here. Let's open up my DHCP. So it seems to be it's possibly on um, this one here, which is 172.25.0.36. So let's see if we can open up a um, a uh, web page to that switch. Yeah, there you go. So here we're presented with the um, the screen at first um, setup. Um, so we have to agree to the license agreement and then type in UBNT UBNT and that should get you into the switch. Uh, default username and password is UBNT uh, and for the password it's UBNT. Um, so what I could also do is have a look at um, the command line as well quickly uh, just to verify there's no uh, settings so I should be able to go on to it I 
keep it here, he says. Maybe you can't. Give me a second, I'll sort this out. Okay, so let's give it another test. Oops. Book T. Load. Open. There you go. So there you go. Here's some previous settings that I hadn't saved properly. So let's um, log in to the command line. Same again, username password is both ubiquity, um, sorry, UBNT. So, running config. Uh, see, there's nothing um, set up on a switch. Uh, the VLAN database it shows is uh, empty and there's nothing else set up at all on the switch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do is set up a VLAN first for management because I try and keep everything separate. Although it's only a home network, um, I still try to keep everything separate. So let's set up a, um, a VLAN first. So it's going to switch in and VLAN. Uh, so I'm going to set up my um, management VLAN first. VLAN 160. And then I'm going to name it as well. Just call it switch management. So what I'm going to do um, to start with is um, tag the management VLAN on all the ports. Um, I'm going to do this until I actually work out what's going to be my uplinks and what servers are going to be connected into each port. Um, so I'm not going to leave it like that. Um, I'm only going to have the ports of the VLANs tagged and untagged on there, uh, the ports they need to be. Um, tagged or untagged on. So let's tag all of these for 160. So we've all tagged for 160 and so that's the VLAN I'm going to use for uh, management uh, 160 so let's go in and change the actual um, management VLAN so let's change the VLAN to 160 because I've just created it. Change the IP address to a, uh, a free IP address. Uh, change the gateway because otherwise we won't be able to get back onto it. And that should be it. So I've changed the IP address to 166. Uh, so we run into 25.0.166. The VLAN for management is going to be 160, and the default gateway is correct, and a subnet mask is correct. So let's submit that. I'm going to lose connectivity to the um, to the management because I've just assigned it a different uh, IP address. So let's go and see the uh, new IP address. And we're back on the switch with a new IP address now. So let's uh, log in again. And we're on the um, logged in uh, with a new uh, VLAN now. 
so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the VLAN and I'm going to create a native VLAN because I don't use um, VLAN 1 at all so let's create a v VLAN for native so let's call this um, free for free so I don't use that anywhere else then let's name that native and let's exclude all defect, um, the default VLAN VLAN 1 uh, exclude that from all the ports and then let's untag um, VLAN 33 on all the ports So VM3 I can actually remove that car because I don't really use that. Uh, VLAN2, that's going to be CCTV, so I can use that one. Let's, um, actually, let's uh, exempt that and uh, untag all that. There you go, for now. So there you go, I haven't got VLAN 1 on any of the ports now. Uh, even on the um, the edge ports, I'm gonna I'm not gonna leave uh, VLAN 3 free uh, untagged on uplinks to other switches. Um, although this switch isn't really gonna be a um, edge switch with uh, clients plugged in, um, I'm still gonna not gonna leave the um, untagged VLANs on there. Um, so that's all done. So we got some basic VLANs in there now. Uh, let's enable um, LLDP as well. Add. So this way you can identify um, identify switches on the ports. Again, you won't want to do this on um, ports where you got end devices on because uh, of security risks. So let's save that config as we've got to this point. So the web interface is very, very quick. Very, very quick. Uh, I should imagine all the edge switches are the same sort of um, speed. Uh, I know the new firmware uh, puts more of the Unify switch interface on these. Um, but at the moment I'm quite happy with this firmware. Uh, until I get a compelling reason to use new firmware, um, I'm going to keep this firmware on here. So let's go into remote devices, see if we can see anything. So yep, straight away we can see uh, a neighbouring device, uh, kitchen switch 1, which is where this um, switch is plugged into uh, on port 27. So if we go onto the HP switch here, we should be able to see the uh, Ubiquiti switch, which we can. Port 27 and the port ID, it's only given the MAC address for the port ID, uh, but it's not too much of a problem to be honest. Uh, so let's go ahead and rename the switch now, and I think it is in uh, description here. Let's just call that. Um, 3 10 gig RD and I won't give any more information for that. So there we have renamed the switch and 
change. Let's go back onto here and sooner or later this will actually change to a quick um, switch name. So let's have a quick look at the um, command line. Can I possibly do a save there? Uh, commit, no, okay. So, uh, capture boot, clear, configure. No. Right. Let's do it. Memory, there you go. So, there you go. Um, and then this save configuration has um, stopped flashing. Um, so you can do a write memory from the command line. So if you make any changes on here, you can do them straight. Um, you can save them without as you go onto the web interface. So let's do a show running config. I've had a quick look at the um, commands on the internet. Um, so there's a few strange things that you need to do if you want to work on a command line, but it's not it's not too bad. So what we got here. So, if I want to configure a VLAN by the command line, um, we can see here we have we've excluded VLANs 1 and 2 and we've included 160 and 133, sorry 333 and we've just tagged 160 at the moment. So, if I was to try and do any um, VLANs on the actual um, CLI, we can have a quick go about now to be honest. Let's um, open up a notepad and see if we can get some um, so we've got the interface set uh, see if we can have a go um, set up a, um, a VLAN on the CLI and assign that VLAN to a, um, a interface. So what are we going to do? So VLAN database must be it. So we got from here. So why don't we add a um, another VLAN? VLAN to this interface 9. So 1, 3. The time to actually play around with a switch like this is when it's not in production, obviously. Um, you don't want to be um, mucking around on a switch when you're not, not too sure if it's in production um, network scenario. Because uh, otherwise you're going to cause downtime and inconvenience for your users. So we have tagged on 128 now and 160, and we've included VLAN here. We've set a name, a servers on VLAN 128, and we've done added VLAN to the database. So I think let's just make sure. So I can't go into interface um, config and interface. So I can go in that way. So you've got to go into um, configure and then interface. So let's add that in here. Add that into there. That's fine. Just get out of here. So then let's just paste this um, straight into the command line. Okay, so 
Let's go onto the switch here now and have a look at the P lens. Switch in. P lens. Let's have a look. So there you go, I've added the um, VLAN1 right there and named it servers and it's tagged on interface 9 as we uh, wanted it to be. So that, that all looks good. So um, the other thing I wanted to um, just check is um, the actual spanning tree uh, along with my other HP switches uh, just to make sure there's no issues with spanning tree um, so let's go onto the command line and let's just uh, save the config so we go it's saved if I just do a show run quickly so you see that the, um, the VLAN one to rate in there and the name called servers. So it's quite possible to add a VLAN via the CLI. And also you can do all the LLDP uh, via the command line which might actually be quicker than going for the web GUI um, on a specific instance. Although if you're just doing um, VLAN changes, uh, the interface is so very quick, um, it's more um, more likely you want to use the web GUI rather than command line, although it's, say it's definitely possible to create VLANs completely uh, by the command line. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is have a quick look on the um, spanning tree, um, see what we're uh, set up as. So, spanning tree admin mode, okay. So, configuration name is the, the switch, uh, revision level, okay. So, that's probably priority, I should imagine. Um, oh, yeah, one, one other thing I want to do is enable routing. So, let's enable routing. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look on the uh, yeah. So the spanning tree. Gives you a bit of information about a spanning tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, uh, switch on the the two HP switches um, that I've got plugged in and see what happens with the spanning tree. So I'll just go and quickly switch on those now. Um, they are a bit noisy so you'll have to put up with a little bit of noise um, but it shouldn't be too bad. So I'll just go and switch them on now. So I've just pushed on the, um, the HP switches. Uh, just give me a little bit of time to um, wake up, boot up. So it's starting to boot up now. Just running through the post. The interface have come up now, and I'm showing two interfaces on the actual um, on the actual ubiquity switch has been up. So let's have a look on the back on the ubiquity switch here. Uh, see if we can see any um, any information about the uh, LLDP. Uh, 
uh, of course I can't see it yet because the um, the uh, LLDP isn't enabled on the interface 15 or 16 uh, so it gives us an opportunity to set up the um, LLDP by the actual um, uh, command line rather than the actual uh, web GUI so it should be a lot quicker to do it on the command line so let's have a look so we want all this basically So I seem to accept the uh, hyphen and then uh, both ports. So that's how you do it on command line. So let's have a look at the uh, remote devices now. There you go. So now I can see the switch 1 and switch 2 are both plugged in. And let's see if I can actually get a, um, a PuTTY connection to the actual um, HP switches. Blocking the trunk uh, on spanning tree, and I can see the um, the ten gig switch. Which is fine. And if I do show spanning tree on here. Got switch priority of three two seven six eight. That's going to config. Just config uh, change of priority. So I can actually uh, change it. Have you won't break it? So now we're um, just by configuring the uh, the priority. Um, I can actually now see that the um, the spanning tree is enabled on the um, the trunk. The, sorry, the trunk one is forwarding now, um, and interface 23 is forwarding. Um, whereas if I have to come the um, I can't really see a lot to be honest on the uh, the switch, which is a bit of a shame. My next uh, videos are going to cover 
setting up a ESXi host um, to use the um, the 10 gig switch or a um, with a backup to the uh, 1 gig switch. Uh, so that's going to be my next video coming up. Uh, so thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.